Hey there party people, happy Friday. Welcome to Think Geek This Week. My name is Bianca and I'm here with my co-host. Hi, my name is Frage, uh, AKA John Frazier. I'm senior buyer here at Think Geek. And Frage is filling in for Jeff this week who is manning the camera. Say hi, Jeff. Hello, I'm also manning the chat. So please bear with me if there's a bit of a slow response on some of this stuff. All right, enough. <laughs> we are running a bit of a skeleton crew here this weekend. So please bear with us and Frage, what do you bring to the table that Jeff did not this week? I've uh, been with the company for now for about 11 years, and uh, besides being devastatingly handsome and an ego the size of a planet, <laughs> my beard play is just about perfect. Definitely high on the beard game. Jeff, you're going to have to work on that, my friend. Um, and we are also joined by our third co-host, which is Timmy. Timmy is dressed today in a beautiful custom Ghostbusters jumpsuit. It's got his name right there and an amazing ecto pack on the back. And he just looks really, really great. And how appropriate that Ghostbusters uh, released this week in 1984. Weird, it's almost like we planned that. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. And if you would like to make a um, costume for Timmy, you can just find a, we have a blog post that's coming soon. We ask for submissions from Timmy's Costume Corps every year before he goes to San Diego Comic-Con. So this is a costume that was made quite a few years ago, in fact. Um, for Timmy to wear at Comic-Con, and we're always looking for new ones each year, so just keep, uh, keep a weather eye on the horizon on your social feeds and on our blog, and that's coming soon. We have lots of awesome pictures of Timmy meeting actual celebrities. It's true. Uh, it's really, really cool, and there will be lots of pictures of Timmy in all of his costumes for years to come, so it's really, it never dies. And uh, we have some really, really cool products for you this week. Uh, so cool, in fact, that we decided to make a commercial about three of them. Last week we went over the Sheikah Slate, but we have two brand new Breath of the Wild products for you this week. And Jeff, roll that commercial. Slate last week. If you're interested in that product, it's on thinkgeek.com. But today we're going to go over the two other products that were featured in that video, starting with my personal favorite, the Link Shield Backpack. This is a full size reproduction of Link's Traveler Shield from Breath of the Wild, which is an amazing game. And if you haven't played it, you really should just stop and go play it right now. It is outstanding. It's very, very good. Um, and anyway, while this shield does not allow you to actually surf down grassy hills, don't worry, we're working on that for, for uh, version two, uh, it does hold all of the materials you could possibly want for your next adventure, whether that's making sandwiches or just going to school. Does it let you make sandwiches in a puff of smoke? It does not. Again, working on that for version two. Yeah. Um, but it is certainly big enough to fit all of the materials that you would need. It's big enough for an adult, an adult link in fact, but it looks super, super adorable on kids, on a tiny link. And I know that school just let out, but it is the perfect adventure backpack for summer camp or just 
putzing around in the backyard. Uh, we would love to see any customer action shots that you guys send of you or uh, your kids in the Link Traveler Shield backpack. You just send those to Twitter or Instagram or directly on the product page. And if you send them to Twitter or Instagram, make sure that you tag hashtag geek famous so that we see it and it'll, it'll be featured on the product site so you could get internet famous too. It's true. So what about that giant, freaking gorgeous 30 by 60 inch uh, link canvas? Good eye phrase and it is very, very large and boy does this thing make a statement. Uh, it's a large 30 by 60 canvas featuring that iconic Breath of the Wild link scaling a cliff heroically in the foreground with gorgeous Hyrule in the background. And it's actually just a few inches smaller in width than Link is tall, so it is Link size, just like our Traveler Shield. You know, there's actually a fun behind the scenes fact for you nerds who like to uh, keep an eye on, on what ThinkGeek does behind the scenes to try and make things better for you. Mm -hmm. When we first got the canvas, it was so big, it was so huge, uh, our warehouse monkeys looked at it and they said, we don't have a box big enough for this. It's true. So they actually called in a consultant to come and find a box that would fit this and not only fit it, but also protect it so it doesn't get punctured during shipping. Uh, but our first quote came in from UPS saying that to ship this ground in the continental US, it was gonna cost $128 just for shipping. Rough. So yeah, we, uh, we said, no, that's not gonna work for us. So we went back to the drawing board, redesigned the box, redesigned the shipping uh, or renegotiated the shipping with UPS. And they made it so that we can now offer you the Breath of the Wild canvas, 30 by 60 inches, free shipping continental US. Crazy. I heard there was an official box expert involved. Uh, I think their title is Boxpert. Boxpert? I think they prefer corrugated cardboard consultant, which is just like the craziest job I've ever heard of. <laughs> a company hires somebody, flies them out to a warehouse and says, hey, look at that thing. Is there a box? And the guy measures and goes, yeah, there's a box for that. And that, that's just what they get paid to do. I think I need to give up my day job. Submit your resume. <laughs> Um, so the next thing that we have in our document, or our document, <laughs> our, document. our docket, We're not well also at all. document, Hi. <laughs> um, is the con bag of holding and our fans know that this is not a product that released last week, but it's a Thinky classic and Fraser, I actually heard you had something to do with this one. I was part of a team of three that we sat down and we thought really, really hard about what a uh, con goer would need to get through their day. Typically when you're at say like San Diego Comic Con, it's crushing. They're just you're just shoulder to shoulder with with the sweating masses, and it can be really hard to get at the stuff in your bag. So we designed this with you guys in mind. First, tons of pockets everywhere. The front pouch flips forward, and notice it's got these little straps to hold it down. The idea being that as you're standing there in line trying to uh, figure out what you're going to next, this little panel here holds your iPad or your schedule, and it just stays there like that, and you're done, and it just flips back. You don't have to fumble to pull your program out. Uh, there are pockets everywhere for your phone, for your autograph uh, Sharpie that you carry around with you just for convenience. Uh, there is a grommet down here through which you can send your power cords into the back compartment where you can have your batteries and, uh, and, and more goodies and more stuff. Uh, we also made it uh, so that the front of the bag is covered in this sort of hook and loop material so that you get these groovy patches which you can then apply. And the cool thing is if you come to a convention where we are working, uh, you can show us your con bag of holding and we will give you a commemorative patch indicating that you were there. In this case, this was uh, New York Toy Fair 2017, which was January, February of, last, of this year. Mm -hmm. Star Wars Celebration 2017. You can only get these mm -hmm. if you go to the convention. We will not send them to you if you say, yeah, I was there and I couldn't show up. Like, sorry, you got to show us your bag. Them's the breaks. And we're actually headed to San Diego Comic Con, as I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Timmy. I believe that's at the end of July. So we will be there. We will have a booth. We will be selling con bags of holding if you don't already have one. But if you do and you're headed out to San, Ga San Diego, come talk to us. Show us your con bag of holding on the convention floor. We will give you a free con exclusive patch. As Fraser Frage mentioned, it is the only place that we give those away. It is the only place we sell them. So it's a little piece of history. We get so excited when you show us these because we're really proud of this bag you guys this is possibly the best bag we've ever made it really is it lives up to that bag of holding name it holds like a magical amount of stuff we hear so many stories of people using it not just for conventions but also as their daily work bag yeah. Frasia, i know you carry one this is so. my daily bag yeah mm -hmm. it's also on sale oh right now on the site 
So it's a great time to pick one up. It's, At, it's 29 bucks. And you heard Jeff, it's only $30. That is uh, cheaper than it normally is. And what a deal. What That's a, a good deal. deal. That's a good deal. I'm not going to lie. Uh, what do we got next? So now I believe. Oh, shame. Yeah. It's, it's shame. time for shame. Now it is time for our uh, speed puzzle round. You might have noticed that on the front of our display here, we've got these nice little brain teaser puzzles. Um, we've got this uh, pack of five, Chinese tea, Greek water mill, Egyptian pie, Roman keys, and Aztec passion flower in this box. Ooh. This big guy is, what is this? Stumped, Stumped. pure genius. And this one is pure genius acorn. And we have challenged each other to solve these little uh, puzzles, and mm -hmm. the loser gets punished. I really, really don't want to eat hot sauce again, so <laughs> I really am dedicated to winning this. Phrase, you are going down. I'm uh, okay. I'm apparently going down, and I don't mind hot sauce, so that's fine. That's Ugh. fine. All right, Jack. Okay, so hands, hands in your lap. Tell us when to go. Ready. Ready. Set. Mm. Go. Oh god. Oh god. No. Nope. Oh, I got this wrong. Mmm. Nah. Oh, I had this earlier. <laughs> what, you practiced? No fair. Definitely, I definitely didn't, but also maybe I did and it still isn't helping mm. me. It's gonna like come to me in a flash of insight and I'll be like, ah! Um. Crap. We're not kidding about these being brain teasers. <laughs> I know, this is like the most compelling video ever. Oh gosh. Oh that's okay. Your shame is currently not being broadcast. Oh we're uh, off? Yeah so if everybody uh, if everybody is looking for a great puzzle we've got a great interest of puzzles on our site and a lot of things are on site. <laughs> Don't put it back together. Oh god now I have to put it back together. No 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 I know. <sighs> oh come on. Oh phrase you are going down my friend. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Oh, phrase. No, no, no. Oh, I'm done. No hot sauce. No hot sauce. I hang my head in shame. Shame. What should I do? Shame. Here's the bell. So, um, as you just saw, it's frantically trying to put these together. These are some really great puzzles. We were actually only doing the difficulty level two puzzle. Yeah, we suck. <laughs> we do, and also we didn't want you to have to sit here and watch it for about 30 minutes while we tried and failed to put it together. You failed me again. So a lot of these bigger wood ones and um, even these smaller ones that are like five star instead of two star, um, they are really hard to put together. Trust me, I tried and failed and figured you guys didn't want to watch that. So <laughs> um, we, have, we have a puzzle for every brain. Yep, even the, the remedial brains. Even right the here. remedial brains. So that's pretty much it for our products this week. I want to show you guys something. Um, this is a, a quick segment that I called uh, that I call uh, rejected product samples. So we here at Think Geek we get samples unsolicited sent to us. They said, you know, hey mm -hmm. Think Geek, I'm I'm Joe from this company, and I've got this great thing that'd be perfect for you guys. I think you should sell it. And so we got this one a couple of uh, months ago, and it's just so wonderfully not us that I just, I, I hung on to it forever and I pull it out anytime someone says, so what do you got that's cool coming up? And I, mm -hmm. the executive comes by and they say, you know, what do you, what do you have that's really, really cool? And I'm like, oh Definitely dude, I've got, I've got something for you. This is uh, the natural superiority of mules. I don't mm. know if you could see this, mm. if it's uh, too small, but yeah, it is. Um, Personally, that's really relevant to my interests. Uh, 218 pages of the history of mules. Oof. So Ooh. yeah, this is um, It's a real page turner. Real page turner. Literally. Or you can use it to security. even out the uh, legs of your table. Yeah. Just put it right under there. It's a solid doorstop. It is a solid doorstop. Not available at thinkgeek.com. Unless available. you all really want it. Who wants Ooh. mules? Ooh, that's hey, a good idea. If you guys would like to learn about the natural superiority of mules, let us know. Like, mm -hmm. comment, share. We will ship this free anywhere in the world. <laughs> On the back of a mule. <laughs> Comes with its own mule. Little known fact. Mule Express. Mule That's Express. Right. It does cost $2,000. Shipping mules is uh, pretty expensive, but $2,000 mule also book all about mules. It's true. There's a box for that. Free mule. Yeah, we'll bring in the box for it. <laughs> <laughs> I so, bet that'd be a fun one. So you know what mules love? Is it space? Outer space. Wow. 
hey, we learned that in Superiority of Mules. Mules love outer space, and so do I. So does Fresh. So does everybody here at Think Geek. And this week, uh, in the news, NASA's uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter found a very strange and deep pit in the southern, southern pole of Mars. Uh, some scientists believe that it's a collapse pit, which is basically like a Martian sinkhole caused by um, ice expanding and uh, retracting and then causing a sinkhole. But other scientists believe that it's actually an impact crater. They're not sure. They're doing a lot of tests on it right now. Mm. Personally, I think that's where the totally real and definitely not imagined copies of Shazam uh, starring Sinbad went. Uh, Fridge, what do you think is in the pit? What's in the pit? What's in the pit? You know... There's one thing that has a tendency to fall into the pit, and that would probably be Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec. Interesting hypothesis. Counterpoint. Mm. What if it's where Atari buried the second half of the missing E.T. games? You know, they only found like 1,200 of them in the Arizona desert. I mean, if you want to get rid of them, why not just launch them into the sun? Fair point, I mean, fair point. All jokes aside, it probably is like a sinkhole. Uh, it's it's located near the southern pole region where there's a lot of ice in the in the in the Martian wintertime. Mm -hmm. The uh, the ice and the CO2 ice will evaporate during the summertime and leave cavities that just sort of collapse into itself. So I mean it's boring, but boring but likely. Hmm. Uh, have you seen the new Mars rover prototype that they released? Was that in the last Batman movie? Ah, uh, you know what? That thing does look like it's straight out yeah, of Gotham. A little bit. A little bit. Do you think that the first Martian astronauts are going to end up wearing bat suits and driving around in this Batmobile rover? And eating potatoes? And eating potatoes. <laughs> We're not going to leave our astronauts on Mars. There's a whole book about how not to do that. Apparently you just ship them there with air and potatoes and you're good. That's true. They didn't bring the mule. That's why. That's it. Mules and potatoes and bat suits. Yeah, as you'll learn in Superiority of Mules, uh, they make great astronauts, in fact. Yeah. The mule makes a natural astronaut due to its ability. Moving on. <laughs> so, obviously the natural segue from space and mules is on to Apple. Let's go to our little tech segment. Uh, Monday's WWDC announcement included Apple's new HomePod a Siri-powered Google Home and Amazon Echo competitor, besides looking like a giant electric marshmallow. HomePod boasts eight speakers, six directional microphones, and will launch sometime in December for $350. Now, not to leave you Android fans behind, sometime in the next uh, 10 days or so, Chinese phone maker OnePlus will announce their OnePlus 5 flagship phone. Specs are rumored to include a Snapdragon 835, dual 12 megapixel rear cameras. Yes, I said megapixel on purpose. Uh, <laughs> AMOLED Quad HD screen, 6 to 8 gigs of RAM, a 3600 milliamp hour battery, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Prices are expected to come in around $450. Those are some expensive marshmallows. I think I'm going to name mine Stay Puffed, a la uh, Amazon Alexa. In fact, Alexa... Play the Ghostbusters theme. I really hope that somebody has their Alexa on. <laughs> <laughs> You're evil. I like it. So I'm actually very excited about our next piece of news. Um, I'm feeling just so many feels about it. Mm. Um, I've sunk a good 60 hours into Shadow of Mordor, which is a game that came out, I believe, last year. And they actually announced the sequel earlier this year uh, called Middle Earth Shadow of War. And it was supposed to release in August, but unfortunately they announced this week that the game was going to be pushed back to October. Uh, now, I'm sad uh, because obviously I want to play it as soon as possible. <laughs> However, I would really like for the devs at Warner Brothers to hold on to it, make sure that it's really good before they release it. So I have something really polished and, and amazing to play in October rather than a glitchy mess in August. So it's supposed to be available for Xbox One and PC and I think Mac as well and then and, and PlayStation 4, is that correct? Mm -hmm. I think they're also going to launch it for um, for Xbox Project Scorpio, which is mm. expected. Well, the rumor is it's going to launch uh, October 13th. There's some Easter eggs mm. in the teaser for Project Scorpio that kind of indicate it's going to launch uh, 
in uh, in October, October 13th. Fun fact, October 13th this year is uh, Friday the 13th. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, good luck, Microsoft. Too. That's a rough day to launch. But, yeah, that seems pretty likely given that they just pushed it back. So we'll see what happens there. Maybe yeah. I'll have to pick up a Scorpio. Mm. So uh, almost as a consolation prize for pushing back the uh, release date, they did release a 15-minute story and gameplay trailer this week, which I loved. Um, Jeff is going to play you a quick uh, sort of clip montage of some of that trailer, but I highly suggest after this broadcast going and uh, clicking over and, and checking it out because it is outstanding. In, uh, in the trailer, we return to Middle Earth and catch up with our broody hero, Talion, and his much more badass uh, spirit soul person, Celebrimbor. At the end of Shadow of Mordor, uh, Talion faced Sauron himself, uh, seeking retribution for the murder of his family. But we all know that taking down a true Dark Lord takes at least three to four games, which I'm completely fine with. Um, the story is really compelling, but actually what made the game so awesome was its nemesis system, and it really seems like, based on the trailer that they just released, that they have overhauled and really improved that nemesis system. Now, Talion and Celebrimbor can fight overlords, and we can, we can breach castles, and not, on not only, but on top of that, we now can recruit an entire army of orcs and uruks to help us breach these castles. It looks really, really cool. Uh, and after breaching walls and defeating mini-bosses, Talon and Celebrimbor must take down the Overlord in pursuit of their goals, and eventually, I assume, the Dark Lord himself. Say Nemesis System three times fast. Nemesis System, Nemesis System, Nemesis System. Not that fast, but I did say it three times. Beat the challenge again. <laughs> Uh, and we also had another really, really exciting um, announcement from Tomorrow Studios, who said that they are planning to um, produce a live action adaptation of Cowboy Bebop. How do you feel, Frage? You know, I'm kind of of two minds of this, because, um, you know, uh, they could just retell the story again, just totally remake mm -hmm. the, the series and sort of compress it down into, uh, into a new um, uh, medium. Or they could, I mean, it's a very rich universe, so they could just mm -hmm. tell brand new stories in the Cowboy Bebop universe. Uh, but one thing's for sure, there are going to be plenty of uh, brand new owners of corgis named Ein in the near future. Hey, I'm totally fine with that. But as I said on social, I'm hesitantly excited. We've all been burned by live action anime adaptations. I mean, who can forget Dragon Ball Evolution? Oh, you're going to go with Dragon Ball. Yeah, you can't forget that. Once you've seen it, it's just burned into your brain forever. It's true. And hopefully that won't happen with Cowboy Bebop. I think the key to success here would be if the remake could get Yoko Kano to do the music. Yeah. So much of the music helped build that amazing future spaghetti western <laughs> feel that Cowboy Bebop so embodied and um it's personally my favorite part i mean that theme song three two one let's jam it's always in my head yeah i'm gonna go and uh, listen to tank during my drive home and probably drive too fast liz on facebook says not happy about this mm. i feel you liz i yep. know that there's two sides of the coin i'm hesitantly excited because hey more cowboy bebop that seems really cool but Live action anime. We've been burned before, and I am scared. I mean, it's it's good story. It's mm -hmm. really good story. It just couldn't be told without without fabulous artwork. And now that you know CG and 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 filmmaking technology is kind of catching up mm -hmm. to what we can do with anime, there's less of a reason not to. So uh, I, I feel you. I definitely feel you. I just want to. Um, I kind of want to kind of hope hold on some hope. Yeah, I think it again. It's going to come down to music and also yeah. casting. I yeah, mean, you got to get the right people. If you guys have some ideas for who you think should be cast in the Cowboy Bebop live action adaptation, please let us know in chat. Give us a tweet. Uh, just reach out to us and let us know what you think because we're already starting our <laughs> own like head casting, and uh, we'd love to know what you think. But I think that pretty much brings us to the end of Think Geek this week. Yep, that's it. That's the end. No more. No more. Not definitely, more. definitely no punishment, right? Oh, look at the time. Oh, look at the time. Oh, hey, hey yeah, sorry, gotta go. If you can think Three, of a two, punishment one, that you would like us to inflict on Frage, uh, send us a send us a tweet, reply in the Facebook chat. Just let me know, because I'll be reading them, and mm. maybe I will do that to Frage and put it in a video for you to watch. Be kind. It's Friday. It's Friday. You gotta get and down on not? Friday. <laughs> you have to get down 
for punishment on Friday. That's how the song goes, I think. That's how the song goes. Anyway, that has been all from us. I am Bianca. I'm Frage. And thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend.